Um, good, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mary Shex. I'm going to present about the artificial intelligence approach to predict anthracic in cardiotoxicity. I am actually a cardiologist in Montreal Earth Institute, but uh, I had the chance to do a fellowship in Sima Mittal's lab, and we published a manuscript about machine learning identify uh, clinical and genetic factors associated with anthracic and cardiotoxicity in pediatric cancer survivors. The manuscript was published in Jack Cardio Oncology in 2020. I am very grateful for our mentorship and also our team. I want to thank Caroline, Miriam, Oye, Roderick, Anna for their help, and also Nea because she did all the biological analysis for the study. Uh, thanks also to Emily, Anne, and Dr. Paul Nathan for the clinical part of this study. I have no disclosure. The anthracic cardiotoxicity is a major cause of cardiac morbidity in cancer survivors. The clinical risk factors and common genetic variants explain only a small proportion of anthracycline cardiotoxicity. And the role of rare genetic variants has not been systematically explored. The objective of this study first was to identify the contribution of rare and low frequency variants to late anthracycline cardiotoxicity. The second objective to validate the functional role of the affected genes. And third objective, to generate an integrated risk prediction model for late anthracycline cardiotoxicity that combines clinical and genetic factors. We use a multi-center prospective cohort study, PCS square, preventing cardiac secular in pediatric cancer survivors. The inclusion criteria were inferior to 18 years old at the time of anthracycline exposure and at least three years for their last anthracycline dose. We selected extreme phenotypes to increase the chance to have rare variants in a nested crease and control design. The cases patients were defined by left ventricular ejection fraction inferior or equal to 50%, despite a low cumulative anthracycline dose inferior or equal to 250. And control patients were defined by left ventricular ejection fraction superior to 55%, despite high cumulative anthracycline dose superior to 250. You have here a represent representation of the core study. Here, the cumulative dose of anthracycline, and here, the left ventricular ejection fraction. The 100 FT3 cases have a low ejection fraction, despite a low cumulative dose of anthracycline. And the 106 controls here have a normal ejection fraction, despite a high cumulative dose of anthracycline. Between the controls and cases, we observe some differences for the age of start of anthracycline, for the use of dexarosan, and also for the cancer diagnosis. We have more leukemia diagnosis for cases and controls. And we did some adjustment for all the studies for these differences. The objective, so first, was to identify the contribution of rare and low frequency variants to late anthracycline cardiotoxicity. We used the gene association analysis. For that, we had the world exam sequencing, and we selected the rare and low frequency with mean allele frequency inferior to 5% in NOMAD. And uh, we look at the non-synonymous SNV, missense, nonsense, and frame genes SNV. We add over 100,000 uh, rare and low frequency SNV in over 70,000 unique genes. The variants were collapsed uh, in gene to generate the gene level variant burden. We have three different methods, SCAT, SCATO, and burden CMC. You have here a little schema, a very simple schema of these uh, uh, methods. You have the cases here, case one, two, three, and the variants in one gene. And you can collapse of the variants of, on this gene in the gene. So, for the three cases, you have four variants in this gene. And for the three controls, you have two variants. And then you compare the, compare the enrichment of variants between cases and controls. 
The analysis was adjusted for sex, ethnicity, cancer diagnosis, age at start of anthracycline, use of dexazosan, chest radiation, and duration of follow-up. And we identified genes with differential enrichment of variants between cases and controls. This analysis identifies 31 genes with differential enrichment between cases and control. They are represented here. For, in this, for these 31 genes, 28 genes were identified by two methods and three genes were identified by one method, but they were implicated in relevant pathway for PS, PMS1, RGS3, L, and LRFIP2. Most of the genes, genes belonging to PI3K, AKT, mTOR, and P53 senile pathway. What is interesting is the enrichment was in control. As you can see here, 90% of the controls are bore um, variants in these 31 genes compared to only 43% of cases. Suggesting the protective role of these variants against the cardiotoxicity of the anthracycline. And we had the same result in the replication cohort of 60 propensity match cases and control. We found enrichment of variants burden in controls for PI free KIR2 variants in 27 person control uh, against 7% of cases. The second objective was to validate the functional role of these affected genes. This part was done by Nea Prama when she did a master in Sima Metals lab. She looked at HPS cell cardiomyopathy. Uh, doxorubicin caused a dox dependent decrease in cardiomyocyte viability. And she was interested in selected gene from the 31 gene um, uh, identified by the previous analysis. She selected five genes um, fr from their relevant pathway, ZNF827, ELAC2, SEC62, USP42, PA3KR2. And she showed that in APSL cardiomyocytes, the docs increase the expression of three of these genes, ZNF827, ALAC2, and PA3KR2. She then looked at PA3KR2 and ZNF827 inhibition preventing docs induced uh, cardiomyocytes and jury. So IPSL cardiomyocytes were predicted by DMSO and gene inhibitor. Uh, during, or gene inhibitor during 24 hour, uh, hours, and then they were treated by doxorubicin during uh, 24 hours. And then we look at the cell viability and the IC50. The IC50 mean um, the dose needed to cause a 50% reduction decrease of cardiomyocyte viability. As you can see for the PI3 KR2 inhibitor, TGX221, the IC50 increased significantly with p-value inferior to 0.05. For metformin, this is the same. The IC50 increased 0.58 with a p-value inferior to 0.05, the inhibitor ZNF827. But we didn't have the same for rapamycin and dexazosan. Dexazosan is an inhibitor already known for cardioprotection, but it was not significantly increased compared to doxorubicin. This really interesting result shows that if you have a pharmacological description in the gene pathway of PIAFRICA R2 and ZNF827, you have a cardioprotection over uh, doxorubicin. Uh, this is why we made the hypothesis that variants in these two genes enriched in control patients give protection, increasing resistance to doxorubicin and anthracycline. The third objective was to generate an integrated risk prediction model for late anthracycline cardiotoxicity that combines clinical and genetic factors. We uh, develop random forest machine learning algorithm to develop free risk prediction model for cardiotoxicity. The first one was a clinical model. 
with sex aged at, uh, at first and second dose, follow-up duration, the first two principal components inferring ethnicity and treatment exposure, and tricycline dose, use of dexazosan and chest radiation. The second model was genetic model, and the third combined clinical and genetic model. What we did is the stratified bootstrapping. So this is a random resampling approach, and this is superior to a split of training and validation when you don't have an external validation population. So we have the PCS square uh, population, and we uh, did a random resampling with 1,000 replicates of a pair of training data set and testing data sets. And for these 1,000 replicates of training and testing data sets, we uh, apply the random forest. So we train the random forest on the training data set for the 1,000 training data set. And then we apply this free random forest for the 1,000 testing data set paired. And we calculated at the end the accuracy measured by averaging over the 1,000 replicates uh, testing data sets. Overall, the combined clinical and genetic model outperformed the clinical model. As you can see, the IUC for the clinical model is 0.59, and for the combined clinical and genetic model is 0.72. When we look in detail, details, uh, the sensibility increased for 43% to 52%. The specificity increased a lot, 74% to 90%. Positive predictive value also, 48% to 76%. Negative predictive value, 70% to 77%. The misclassification decreased, 36% to 22%. False positive rate, 16 to 6% and false negative rate 20 to 16%. This is the representation of box plots of the different accuracy methods. And you have here the IUC, the sensibility, the specificity, the positive predictive value and the negative predictive value. As you can see with the combined model, uh, everything increased and uh, the specificity increased uh, this is the highest um, uh, accuracy measure uh, with uh, the positive predictive value. And you have a decrease of the misclassification, false positive rate, and false negative rate. So we have a combined clinical and genetic model with a high specificity. This high specificity model could identify at-risk individuals with high confidence in whom the modification of chemotherapy or use of cardioprotective agents could be justified. And it could also avoid overestimation of the risk of anthracycline cardiotoxicity. It would prevent withholding life-saving anthracycline in patients who are not at such risk. We know that we need external replication court to have an independent validation of this model. In conclusion, a rare variant in genes involved in cardiac injury pathway appear to protect against anthracycline cardiotoxicity. PR3, CAR2, and ZNF827 gene involved in autophagy emerge as promising targets for the development of cardioprotective agents against anthracycline cardiotoxicity. And combining genetic and clinical factors improve the ability to predict individual at risk for anthracycline cardiotoxicity with high specificity. Merci de votre attention. Thanks for a lot for your attention. I'm available for any question.